Hello everyone, let's see if this works. Does audio work? Does video work? This is a whole new thing now, different setup from a different place, from a completely different internet connection as well. So fingers crossed that this works. Different webcam, different microphone, it's all going to be different. So just a show of hands, who's here first of all? See plenty of people in the chat already. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And uh, can you hear me? Can you hear me? That is indeed the question. Oh, Andrew, you're here. Nice. Roberto, hello, hello, hello. Ryan, Hanro, Jacob, Nico, Horpenflyer, Wienwe. Yes, perfect. You guys can hear me. Fantastic. This is going via my laptop because I was at the German military archive Monday to Friday. I pretty much came back yesterday. And uh, yeah, so this is a completely different setup uh, to what we are used to. Hopefully everything works out fine. Hope you guys are having a fantastic weekend. It's going to be Christmas very soon, right? Or your regional equivalent. So uh, let's have a good time today. Hope all of you also enjoyed the video that came out yesterday on uh, Japanese fighter tactics straight out of the archives, that one as well. If you haven't seen it yet, where have you been? Where have you been indeed? Uh, check it out on the channel. It's about 20 to 10, 25 minutes of your time. Fantastic information in there on how uh, the Japanese uh, would engage sort of, you know, bomber formations of B-25s, B-20s, B-17s, and B-24s. And uh, who knows, in the future, I might do something on uh, B-29s as well. I've got the files. So hopefully if the video does well, YouTube seems to be punishing that video a little bit. It um, initially didn't do really, really well. Who knows what the algorithm says in a couple of days. Who knows indeed. But uh, nice. Yo, you're not late, Just Fly. We have only just started. Season greetings indeed, Grandizer. How are you? How are you? Plain time. Yes, it is plain time. The sick plan. Guys, guys. The plant in the background of my videos is not sick. Neither is it malnourished. I am giving it water. It is literally on strike. It's always been like this. I water it. I take care of it. It's got plenty of sunshine. And it also gets some shade. No direct sunlight. It is doing fine. It's simply on strike. It doesn't want to perform. That's just how it is. Well, I hope it, it's still fine when I come back. Because um, I will be gone from, from my place for, for some time. So... Uh, hopefully, hopefully it survives. But uh, hey, it, it brought it on itself. The plant is fine. It's just trying to appeal to all of you people who uh, who obviously worry about its uh, about its survival, which is good. But um, it's fine. The plant is fine. Uh, no, the video has come out. Make sure that if you subscribe to the channel, to also bell, hit the bell notification button. Simply that makes this or use the um, the subscription tab. Actually, hit the bell notification and use the subscription tab. And remember, uh, videos come out on my channel twice a month, on the second and the fourth uh, Thursday of every month. So that's sort of my upload schedule. And if you haven't seen the video just yet, I'm gonna post it in the chat before we get going with, uh, with, this, uh, with this stream just so you know what I'm talking about. Here we go, that's the last video. In case you've missed it, make sure you watch it. Is that going to work? There we go, the chat, the link is in the chat. Um, for my final paper at Utrecht University, I was planning on researching German statistical information on World War II. Can you recommend me to get into contact with the German military aircraft? Well, you have to go by the official route, I'm afraid, Shock Blaster, and do it fast, do it fast, because I don't know how, what your time schedule there is, but um, it's very difficult right now to get a spot in the archive. Uh, if you want to go there physically, there are some files that are already available digitally, uh, not that many, however. So get the go on their website. You will have to fill out their form in German. They don't. They have an English translation form, uh, but you will have to fill out a German form. It's very easy. It takes five minutes of your time. Uh, send that out and get your get your registration number and then try to book a space uh, and do it really fast. You have to be proactive on this. Um, no daily dallying. Get it done. And once you have it done, it works out fine for you, I'm sure. Good luck with that paper, by the way. Um, the zero pilot who attacks a B-18 is crazy. Nah, B-18 would be fine. A B-18 would be fine. A Bolo, that's fine. But you probably meant a B-17, right? 
yeah, that's a bit bit different. That is a bit different. For Weihnachten, indeed. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, so I don't know. YouTube does this weird thing where even if you have the bell icon, sometimes it doesn't tell you that a video comes out. And I think this is just, you know, when I push out a video, um, YouTube wants to know sort of within 24 hours, is it doing well? Like, is the thumbnail good? Is the title good? And so on and so forth. So I think that maybe because this video didn't hit all the check marks in the algorithm, maybe that's why it's doing uh, worse. But yeah, um, I mean, I'm going to put it into the chat once again, um, just so you, you guys can check it out in your own time. Um, it's 20 minutes of your time, and it's it's packed full of good information. Um, Question, are you trying to release videos as shorts, regular, inside a cockpit, regular, talking about plans? Because that builds one complete row on your... Um, do you mean the playlists? I mean, I have my normal playlist, I have inside a cockpit, and then I think we're starting to do more uh, live streams as, as well. At least once a month, I want to do live streams. Um, yeah. Uh, I think if you... A short, regular... Oh, you mean shorts, YouTube shorts. I mean, I keep telling, having people tell me that I should do YouTube shorts, but I'm, I'm, I, I still don't exactly know how I would do that with my channel. Um, so yeah, yeah. Use uh, like it mentions us there in, in in chat. Uh, use the subscription page if you go on YouTube as your bookmark page for YouTube, because if you YouTube and you just type in YouTube on Google or you have like the the homepage of YouTube. Um, you don't see the videos that you actually subscribe to. What you're going to see is what YouTube thinks you want to see, which is could be anything. And there might be good, some good stuff in there. But if you really want to watch the stuff that you actually subscribe to, make sure you actually bookmark the uh, the subscription page rather than the normal page. And if you don't find anything on the subscription page, I mean, go to the homepage afterwards, right? Um, any thoughts on German Zeppelin tactics sometime? Not that much. The sources are, there's very few sources on that. It's mainly secondary literature. And sometimes I'm not 100% sure on that when it comes to World War One. And sadly, World War One aviation does it really, really poorly. And if I put a lot of time and effort into a video, I do want to see, you know, people actually watch the video. So I don't know. And also with Zeppelin tactics, you're getting into territory. That's a, that's a little bit touchy sometimes. So I'm not quite sure. Just honest answer here. Um, Hard question. What is better, water cooling or air cooling? Well, that depends on what aircraft you're going to be making, right? Um, and what engine you have, first of all. I mean, it's going to depend mainly on the engine, first of all, and then what sort of aircraft you want to do. But you choose the engine based on the type of aircraft you want to do. So, I mean, most sort of racer aircraft usually went with water cooling. There are some exceptions, especially in America. But uh, interwar... Europe time would mainly be water cooling or evaporation cooling. Actually, if, if you wanted to be really cool, you went evaporation cooling if you wanted to do a pick a racer. Anything about Japanese Schrege music? A little bit, a little bit, but not enough for, for a full video just yet. Um, skill division, the Hensho 129 has four variants. The stat card makes it seem like the 30 millimeter can beats the 37 and and 75 because of the sheer ammo capacity. Is this just in game? No, for the for the I would say the the 30 millimeter MK103 was probably the best anti tank gun you could put on an aircraft during World War II. Um, yeah, uh, the 37 is not a bad gun, but the, given ammo capacity, rate of fire, and so on, the MK103 beats its hand, hands down, and penetration not too bad either. How accurate is War Thunder? Well, the models are accurate as far as they, they I think they have well, a couple of uh, planes that are still waiting for sort of a visual fix. And there's sometimes some inaccuracies with the vehicles. I'm only talking about the planes here, by the way. But overall, uh, War Thunder does it really well when it comes to um, to the visuals and, and to, the, to the looks of the aircraft. Um, maybe do Aviation Historian reacts to movies, video games? I, to be honest, I'm Fokkerman. Um, I'm not too much into the React stuff. I, I have done it in the past a little bit, and I've did that thing on Call of Duty, but 
I know a lot of YouTubers do that, and I just can't be bothered. I'd rather spend time on on a video that you know from the archives where I learn something as well. Reacting is always easy, right? You just see on screen, you're pointing out the mistakes, and done. Content is done. Fair enough. Maybe as filler, but it's just not the stuff I want to do. Um, I want to you know go to the archives, get my hands dirty, and bring new stuff to the channel rather than you know <laughs> smash on on somebody else's creation. That's just not what I'm here for. Um, in Brazil, the uh, Aerospace Museum is open again. Uh, yeah, I'll check out their website at least. <laughs> I don't think I can come to Brazil anytime soon. Would like to, of course, but uh, I will check their website, definitely. Have you done a video on the P61 Black Widow? No, I have not. What plane do you think is the sexist? Sexiest, you mean? You're probably sexiest. Um, there's a couple of really cool looking aircraft. Uh, I do like Italian biplanes, CR-42, CR-32. Uh, as a biplanes, I think those are fantastic lookers. Uh, for single engine aircraft, I am partial to the Razorback Mustangs. I think they actually look a lot more aggressive and fast than the, the bubble top that everybody likes. Uh, FW-190 is a pretty good looker. Henshi-123 is also a good, nice looking play plane. Um, a20, I like the look of that. Uh, SBD as a dive bomber has a really cool look. Yeah, lots of cool planes. Hellcat or Corsair? Uh, Corsair. Um, which Japanese aircraft is your favorite? Ooh. You know, that's a good question. I I used to say the KI-43 uh, because I, I, I really like sort of that. <laughs> I, I just like the Hayabusa. Um, but I wouldn't want to f necessarily fly one. Um, so, you know what? What's that, what's that uh, aircraft called again? Um, huh. Completely forgot the name now. I have to figure. I'll come back to that. I'll come back to that. Um We we'll cover the awful hell dive in a late war in the Pacific. Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe. Uh, I mean, there's a whole sort of thing is COVID, right? COVID has impacted us all of us, and I'm not going to be complaining here because we all have a tough time at the moment. But for about two years now, I've been postponing a trip to the U.S. I want to come over there. I want to visit your museums um, for the channel for myself. Just. You have so much stuff over there. It's unbelievable. Um, you know, but b before COVID, I even thought, you know, let's do a crowdfunding campaign. Get me over there. Um, you know, film as many inside the cockpits as we can and so on. I mean, what's, what's your opinion on that? Should we, should we do that? Um, but then COVID hit, right? So I would, um, I would definitely come over there at some point and, uh, and do all of that. And I think sort of when I'm over there, what I want to do specifically is also film a lot of sort of the, the World War II aircraft and do specific episodes on those. And, and that would be a, a, good, um, a good possibility, perhaps. The only problem is that, I mean, as, as, as a European, especially as a German, the pure scale of the U.S., like, I do not comprehend it. Like... You know, for, for a friend of mine once said, you know, uh, Europeans think that 200 kilometers, which is like 160 miles, is a long distance. For you Americans, that's nothing. But you Americans think that 200 years is a long time, whereas for us Europeans, that's not the case, right? Um, but that's sort of the cultural difference we have. So every, coming over to the U.S., what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to take one or two museums, film a lot of stuff there, and then visit all a lot of museums, see what's available there, and then come back. Um, but it's going to be a massive undertaking. I have to catch up with the chat. You are blowing me away here with all the questions. I actually had some stuff to prepare, but let's keep it going for now. Um, how long will fighter aircraft still have a pilot sat in it rather than a console on the ground? For a very long time still. Still for this century at least. Um, yes, there will be a move towards UCAFs and so on and so forth. Um, but from what I know... No mainstream military, never mind what they say publicly, but from what I know, no mainstream military uh, of any 
reasonable size right now has plans of completely doing away with the pilot internally. That's what they're saying, right? Externally, they might be like, oh, yeah, let's embrace drones and so on and so forth. Internally, they know that's complicated. And that's a really, really, that's a completely new level stuff. Um, so we'll still see a pilot in this century in um, in in the, uh, the actual plane. So let me scroll down. I need to catch up here. Um, Pensacola, yeah. Uh, any plans for 2022 for your channel? What direction do you go to stay on course? Um, I think right now in 2021, we had a really cool sort of uh, mixture between stuff. So we had some inside the cockpits come out, less so than usual, color COVID. Uh, by the way, if you're a Patreon or a channel member, you already have access to two more inside the cockpits. Just want to point that out there. So if uh, if you haven't seen those yet, check them out. Um, or support the channel and then check them out. Um, and then... Yeah, I think we're going to stay on course for now. I really like these inside uh, the cockpit episodes when I can make them, plus sort of the archive footage. Um, but there's always, I think there's always room to, to for new ideas and uh, bring something new in. Um, I have a couple of ideas, but sometimes you need to play them close to the chest before you, before you do anything. Oh, okay. Um, Igor, thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed for that donation. Um, amazing analysis of the American 50 cal machine guns and British German cannons of fighters. Can we expect video comparison about Soviet Japanese German 20 millimeter fighter cannons? I haven't thought about it, but that would actually be a, a pretty cool opportunity, I think, to show some of the differences. And um, and I think if you sort of can show the differences between the different 20 millimeter cannons that were available during World War II, especially sort of Soviet, Japanese, German, could also bring in the British. Um, then you can also bring that back to the 50 cal and say, well, you know, and sometimes it actually makes sense of sticking with the 50 cal in instead of taking the cannons. Um, so that's actually a cool idea. Yeah, I haven't, f I, ha I didn't think about this, but cool idea. Thank you very much, Igor. Um, should have come up with that myself, but sometimes you just don't. Uh, so I'm just going to write that down before I forget because I'm trying to keep up with chat here and y'all are just blowing me away. Um, let me scroll up again. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Is there any logic behind German aircraft painting colors like the Allied invasion stripes? Uh, expect the yellow nose, uh, except the yellow nose, of course. Yes, so, for example, if you look at, well, there are not that many um, color pictures of, of the time, but, for example, the squadron markings on the side, um, sometimes they're red, sometimes they're white, sometimes they're black, sometimes they're green. Um, those would also then, for example, show which staffel that, that aircraft was attached to within a Geschwader. Obviously, things would change during the World War and so on and so forth. Uh, so that's sort of stuff. The yellow nose and then the sort of yellow markings that um, that you pointed out are, of course, for very quick IFF. And then later on during the war, during the defense of the Reich, um, they also had special color bands on the on the uh, rear fuselage of the aircraft to describe exactly what sort of unit and area they're coming from, um, which uh, was a very sort of, well, I wouldn't call it intricate system. It was a very simple system, but yeah, that, that, that was uh, one of the, the ideas behind it. Um, Kenneth, just found your channel. Excellent content. Uh, go to the U.S. Air Force Museum in Dayton, Ohio. Oh, man, I wish I wish I was living next to them. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I know it. I know it. I, and that is definitely sort of the port of call if I go to, over to U.S., which I will eventually, absolutely. Uh, then I, I want to go to Dayton. I ha still have to you know, sort of reach out to them and... and see what happens but uh hopefully i can film there that would be really really cool have you ever seen the wings of russia documentaries no i don't really watch documentaries to be honest um every time i see a documentary i'm just like man i'll just make my own videos and make something new instead of a lot of this rehash stuff uh your 2021 content has been excellent even in the face of COVID. keep it up thank you very much Thank you very much indeed. Yeah, it's been it's been an interesting time, but you know, interesting times are also sometimes 
the uh, the catalyst for innovation and improvement. So yeah, I think we I think on the channel we had a good we had a good run in 2021, and now I do want to continue that. Um, we're sort of getting into our stride here, I think. Um, which German state am I from? I'm from the civilized state in Germany. You can choose from a couple of those then. <laughs> um, white band for the Mediterranean, yellow for Russia, and red for Germany and the West, right? Ah, it, it was more fluid than that. I, I, I do, yeah, no. Uh, where, where, where? I'd have to check it out again. Uh, I don't have my reference book with me now with all the colors. Um, I, uh, before I say something wrong here, I'll check that out again. And then next stream, next stream answer, ask me the same question again. Um, who would lose a marriage or a visit to every museum, aircraft and airspace place? Um, oh, who would I choose? Um, we can do both. If you've got a partner who's also interested in that, you can do both. Wings of Russia is awesome. You should definitely watch it. Yeah, I'll check it out then. Um, Wings of the Red Star. Um, yeah, I think I have seen that. Just I remember um, recently a friend of mine pointed out a couple of documentaries on Amazon Prime uh, for aircraft. And he was like, oh, what's your opinion on those? And I started watching them. And even this description of the of the documentary you can already point out mistakes in that but like really obvious mistake i'm not about being pedantic right but really obvious mistakes in the descriptions of these documentaries and then just like oh no not again um du kommst aus österreich und ich aus oh contentious statement right there in the chat um <laughs> Love these responses to my to my German location. <laughs> um, <laughs> when you will you make a video on Cold War air tactics? So actually, um, in the archive, in the German military archive that I went to um, on Thursday and Friday, sorry, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I looked a lot at manuals from East Germany. So with MiG-23s, uh, Sukhoi 22s, uh, MiG 29s, what I could see, some of that st stuff is still security clearance. I'm running into my first security clearance issues here, right? Where, did, where, where I put in my my order to to the system, and then they're like, uh uh, that one's blocked for another 15 years. You can't watch that one unless you apply for it, and then it has to go via the defense ministry. And it's like, oh, God. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Uh, <laughs> It's fun. It's fun. But yeah, I found a lot of stuff in there. And you know what? What I find fun, really fascinating is I had a couple of conversations about this with uh, with colleagues as well. The East German manuals for the aircraft are very different to how NATO does it, right? So in East Germany, a manual is essentially just copy pasted, but translated into German uh, from the USSR manuals. Kind of makes sense. Same aircraft. They're getting those aircrafts from the USSR, so they're just going to take the um, the manual. But the translation is sort of a mixture of translation where they still use a little bit of Russian because the pilots did learn Russian, so they know they know the language, right? Um, but the manual's content itself is really strange because in one single manual, sometimes you have everything that is technical with the aircraft plus uh, training, so instruction, plus what has to be done in certain situations, like emergency situations, and plus what has to be done in combat, like tactics and stuff. But sometimes this changes per aircraft. So you're sitting there like with three different manuals per aircraft, which roughly have the same title, and you look through the tables of contents and you're just like, well, they're completely similar in this regard, but then this one has that chapter and that one has that chapter, which is different, but that seems to be the only difference. And then you go into the subchapters and you realize, oh, they're different again. So really, really strange. But I, I, I chatted with a couple of people who are um, from the old uh, Soviet, um, sorry, the Warsaw Pact countries. Uh, like I had a Polish colleague, I have a, um, a Czech colleague, and they said like, yeah, same thing for them. It was just the, Rus uh, the Soviet manuals, um, 
that came out in the Russian language, just translated into their own language. And sometimes, um, uh, how shall I say? Sometimes they didn't translate, even though they had a original word in their own language, which would be a better fit than the Russian word. They would go with the Russian word and just sort of half translate it into, in the, into the specific language like German um, and go, roll with that instead of using just the German word. And it's really, really strange. Um, but yeah. Favorite post-war German aircraft project? Alpha Jet. Alpha Jet. Absolutely. Alpha Jet. Um, actually, I want to make a video about that as well. Uh, about the Alpha Jet. And um, let me see. Uh, do I have something on that? Can I share something on that? Actually, I'm not quite sure if I can share that because of that, that one was one of, one of those files that was um, that had to be cleared. So no, I can't share that now, I think. Um, you're going to have to wait for the video. You're going to have to wait for the video. Um, the Smithsonian in the United States has many rare aircraft in storage. Uh, ooh, that that the chat just moved, including a TA-152. Do you feel as though these rare aircraft should be restored and put on display for the public? Uh, restored? I mean, the thing is, I'm having worked with museums i know how much time effort resources and manpower has to go into restoring a single aircraft it, it seems easy from the outside it's not easy so yes while ideally absolutely i would want that sometimes i can understand why museums don't do that um but yeah it, it would be cool especially for aircraft where there's only sort of one surviving uh airframe it would be cool to see a at least a static restoration of it um, I don't think necessarily that you have to put it back into running and flying order because that has a lot of risks as well, especially if it's the last aircraft. It's not a good idea, uh, but a static display would always be nice if that's feasible. Um, how do you rate the training of the East German Air Force? Uh, would they have stood up to NATO tactical wise? Well, the thing is NATO tactics and PAC tactics are completely different. You already have this sort of with the amount of uh, independence a pilot has in the actual airframe. So Eastern East German pilots would essentially fly a course that was being directed to them by a ground controller. Yeah, to put it very simple. And whereas West German pilots and NATO pilots have more, well, they also have a designated course, but they are less restricted in that sense. So um, you know, NATO and the West puts more emphasis on sort of the independence of a pilot and the ability of a pilot to judge the situation and respond according to changing circumstances, whereas with PACT, that was less the case. Um, but East Germany, uh, even though they had, I think, less flying hours than their West German counterparts, their pilots were still relatively good. And when the Bundeswehr, or when West and East Germany re uh, reunited, um, obviously the armies sort of reunited as well, right? And a lot of East German pilots didn't make the cut, but not because of their skill. Um, in fact, some of them were very, very good pilots, but because uh, Eastern German or East Germany would only allow very specific pilot uh, people to be pilots. Because obviously, if you're in a jet, all ha you have to do in order to defect, even with a brand new MiG-29, is to you know make a little course correction and just fly into West Germany, and you're going to be there within two minutes before any sort of air to uh, ground to air battery can respond and like check where, where the hell you're going. So they only put East Germany, only put very um, dedicated sort of East Germans into their, uh, into the cockpits. Um, and that's the reason why, why a lot of those pilots didn't then end up flying for the Bundeswehr because they, they were just compromised um, from, from that regard. Uh, but I think, sort of skills wise, your tactics are different, but they certainly knew their craft. Absolutely. Um, East German stuff is so interesting, especially the symbols. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you go to Berlin, you can still see like random souvenir shops just selling old militaria from, from East Germany. It's, it's crazy. Um, this is doch bitte vor, dann zeigst du es ja nicht. You little sneaky bugger. No, 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 not yet, not yet. <laughs> um, thanks again for those holiday greetings, Grandizer. Uh, 
plans for I am I am a cat person t-shirts with Wildcat, Panther, Tomcat. Um, well, sort of Bernhard has sort of said that I should be doing that, but the thing is, like with my I don't know, like my merch has never worked. People were never interested in my merch. So I'm sitting there like, well, you know, um, if people don't want merch, maybe people just don't want merch, right? Um, so yeah, I don't know. I, I still have some merch in on the channel. I think, does it show even below the stream? Is there any merch there? Can anybody tell me? I don't even, can I, can I share that stuff? Is there a way to do this? Well, maybe not now. Um, so yeah, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Do you, do you guys want to have more t-shirts? Mm, let me know. Maybe. Um, any good uh, books on specifically US World War II era aircraft in the RAF and Commonwealth? Um, yeah, I've only had my library right now. What's the, uh, what's the book again? After chapters up. I hope I find it now. Uh, if I was home now, I would just turn around. How, how am I blanking now? Why am I blanking now? I mean, there is one that I know that's sort of land lease, but that's mainly for the Soviet aviation. I'm thinking of a completely different one. It's just, nah, nah. Who was the author? It's not William Wolfe. I keep thinking about William Wolfe, but it's not William Wolfe, who does really good books, by the way. Um, maybe, maybe it comes back to me. Um, Allegedly, there were a lot of Stasi agents among pilots as well. Another reason very few pilots joined the Luftwaffe. Yeah, that's what I heard as well. The thing is, like in East Germany, you know, I don't want to speak bad of, of East Germany because it's not like everybody was in the Stasi. But the Stasi had created such a system that there was a file on everyone and there was sort of, you know, uh, the, the lines get blurry very quickly. So, um, but yeah, there, there, there was just a reason that that a lot of these pilots were simply not um, considered to be uh, to be a fit for the Luftwaffe, the uh, the West German and then Old German Luftwaffe. Okay, I I'm completely sorry. There's 230 people here, which is fantastic. Thank you very much for being here. I'm trying to keep up with chat. I just can't. <laughs> I just can't. Um, Reading some books, I always have the impression that Heinkel was sidelined by the Luftwaffe, that Ernst loved to shift blame for his failures. I think that Heinkel 177 is a hint. I don't think that Heinkel... Yeah, I, Heinkel likes to portray himself as that, but I don't think he, he was really sidelined. Um, I mean, he did himself no favors with the Heinkel 177, but the Luftwaffe did itself no favors with that aircraft as well. I mean, the demands to set on that aircraft and the changing demands all the time. Like, do we want to buy a dive bomber? Do we not want a dive bomber? Do we want one? Do we not want one? Blah, 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 blah. Uh, yes, I do play the ACS. Um, so I don't think, like, Heinkel just... We have this image of him sort of being this victim, especially against Messerschmitt, but that's not the case at all. Heinkel profited at a lot um from 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 the from this time I would buy a tomcat shirt well that's the problem right everybody has like that one t-shirt they would buy and but not the other ones so i don't know i'm i'm i'm, I'm just not i want to do some merch but i want to do something i want to do good more merch i just don't want to do something that's just merch uh everybody here wants uniforms <laughs> um other than Stuka book, etc., no merch link. Okay, well, um, next time then. Next time. I'm using this 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 streaming service by YouTube um, webcam mode. Uh, God, I sounded so old there. Yeah, I'm using the streaming service, uh, which has reduced functionality. So I can't usually I can like pop into the chat. Hey, there's merch here or something. What's this? I can put my own super stickers in super chat for donations. I can donate stuff to myself. Cool. 
I can show custom emojis. Oh yeah, if you're a channel member, you can use custom emojis. You know what? I'm just going to put a bunch of custom emojis here that I made into the chat just to show you all what you're missing out on. If you're a channel member, you can use those. Does that work? Does that even work? There we go. <laughs> Uh, I can create polls. I can. Oh yeah, yeah. Let's do a poll. Let's do a poll. Do you want more merch T-shirts? And if I say two more merch T-shirts, oh no, actually I can't show them the other stuff now. Uh, here we go. Is that no? Uh, how does this work? Yes. Oh, this is the first time I'm doing this. This is ridiculous. Here, ask my community. I'm asking my community now. There we go. Is it, where's the poll? I don't even see the poll myself. Fantastic. I don't see the result of the poll. Oh, there it is. Do you want more merch? <laughs> Can't believe that's my first poll. Oh, embrace that capitalism. Can't believe that's my first poll. Um. Tomcat in West German markings. I I think some people would call shenanigans on that one. Um, oh yeah, that's true, Corpin. That's true. Um, if you could buy a plane, which one would I buy? Uh, PBY Catalina in flight worthy condition, and I would move out of my place and I would just live in that one. Not very sustainable, but I would do it. Uh, how come the Graf Zeppelin only could only carry 40 aircraft? Because it was a horrible, horrible carrier. Um, yes, uh, Europa, there they, they are. Um, the best ones I found are actually books that have been written a long time ago, sort of between, yeah, sort of around the time of the Second World War in the 50s or in the 60s. Um, those are sort of the best. They're very technical. You have to get into grips with the language. Um, but there's one called aircraft structures. But I, again, if I if I was home, I would just pull it out uh, of the uh, of the uh, the book rack. Um, it's called aircraft structures. It's a British book. I bought it for like ten pounds somewhere. One of the best books I ever bought. Um, Um, how about your old name Bismarck, but with wings or something? I don't know. I, I had this old channel logo that uh, that I sell this merch as well. Didn't do very well. But then again, the thing is with me, I don't like advertising. I don't. I just don't like. I, I do it now because you all keep telling me to do it. Um, but I'm just so bad with it. Okay, so the poll, the end. I'm, I'm just going to end the poll here. Uh, Two thirds of you want more mer more mer merch T-shirts, and uh, one third doesn't. Um, Cool, 100 votes, that's pretty That's pretty good. That's half of you. Thanks very much for voting. Um, we do have one T-shirt available on the channel uh, with the F5 Tiger 2. You can buy that in the merch section on the channel. There's also a really cool um, poster there on the F-104 Starfighter, uh, if that's your cup of tea. Um, do you still play Backpipes or Chandra? I haven't in a very long time, sadly. Uh, I, I although funny enough, Isaac, that you asked that now. Um, about two months ago, I looked at my chanter and I was like, "I'm feeling it again. I'm feeling it again." Um, yeah, and Nafats, not all fighters are zeros. T-shirt would be cool. I should remember that one. Um, Speaking of Germany, has Luftwaffe figured out what they're going to do about the Panavia tornado once it's gone? Uh, we still don't have a um, solution. So a couple of days ago, our new defense minister stood in front of a Eurofighter uh, saying that she wants to make a decision quickly. And that's also in the coalition agreement between the different parties that now form up the ruling uh, government. Uh, that they want to do it quickly. But in their coalition agreement, they also have this follow-up sentence about the nuclear sharing that's sort of attached to Tornado, where they're like, well, we're going to weigh our options there. That's not a full translation. That's just a get-to-the-point translation. Um, so, and what's it looking like now? First of all, Super Hornet is going to get ever more difficult. It, it, I think we're about the time when that that thing that ship has sailed or that aircraft has flown. Um, 
So it's either looking at more Euro fighters, at which point nuclear sharing is problematic, because if we take more Euro fighters, we're essentially out of nuclear sharing, unless we get the Euro fighter certified, which is something that I don't think Airbus would want to do. So also that an information transfer on Eurofighter has to uh, take place to the Americans, which is maybe something that the Luftwaffe doesn't want to do. And at the same time, the certification is going to take a couple of years because the Americans would probably not do it as quickly as you know they would with one of their own planes. And then the other option that's now in the room is that is a European solution, as she called it, that is maybe having a mixed force with another European country like the Netherlands, that the Netherlands does the nuclear sharing because they're already in it, but they cover Germany with their, their F-35s, whereas the Germans are doing more yeah, Eurofighter. But then, of course, you also have the other problem with ECR, tornado ECR, that has to be covered. And, uh, it's, 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 I think we're going to see a, a decision made very quickly and reasonably clear, quickly for Germany. I do think we're going to see one. But by this point, I, I, I would say we only have bad options. Or not bad options, but not the options that we used to have. And we just have to make a decision. And once we've made a decision, we have to stick with that decision and, I, and work with that decision. And I, I think then we can still work with it. Okay. Pack, um, catching up on the chat again. Uh, I don't want advertising, but you forced me to. Well, Jacobs, that, that's literally what's happening. I mean, I have everybody in my own personal surrounding telling me I have to advertise myself more. I have to sell myself more. I'm horrible at elevator pitches. What the hell is an elevator pitch? Like somebody somebody asked me recently, what is your channel about? And I'm, I'm just like, planes. I, I literally wouldn't be able to tell them. I'm so bad with self-advertising, but people keep telling me to do it. And they're right. You know, they're right. You have to put yourself out there. Uh, let's be, Let's be a little bit... Uh, realistic here um who made the chanter rogue i can't remember it's a relatively cheap one that i bought a couple of years ago um maybe it's rogue actually or it's roge how do you pronounce that roge where did uh, jacques Cousteau's catalina go um that's not the one that landed no that's not the one that landed in the somewhere in the east in the middle east um why was the Messerschmitt chosen over the Heinkel 100? Was it out of bias from the German military? No, the Heinkel 100 was not a good plan, not a good military plan. I have a video on this. Um, I can't remember what it's called. Just check out military aviation history, Heinkel 100. But, you know, the Heinkel 100 had evaporation cooling, which is really good from an aerodynamical standpoint because you don't have any radios that stick out. The problem is you take one bullet and your cooling is gone, completely gone. You can say the same thing about about uh, a normal liquid cooling, but the thing is, if you have evaporation cooling, the amount of surface area that is taking up for cooling um, is so much greater than if you just have a standard radiator. And the Germans realized that with the Heinkel 100, the cooling is not good enough uh, for the engine, so they had to build up build in an additional radiator anyway, losing some of that performance in the plane, and then you had to weigh it down because then you had to make a military conversion, and then it wouldn't have the performance anyway. Um, that it used to have as a racer or as a sort of world-class um, record breaker. Um, so the Messerschmitt 109, also from a production standpoint, from a simplicity and mass production standpoint, was a lot better. So the, choosing the 109 over the Heinkel 100 was not even a decision that was worthy of, like, you didn't even have to argue about it. What you could have argued about is between the 109 and the Heinkel, the Heinkel 112. But the Heinkel 100 was not a military aircraft. Um, guten Abend, uh, Zanadus. Guten Abend to you as well. Uh, tell Bernhard everybody said hi. I will, actually. Uh, he, he wrote to me earlier. I have to check in with him at some point. Uh, he seems to be doing all right. Um, yeah, I wish I had a seaplane as well. Uh, we demand a BF-109 versus a Heinkel 112 video. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Maybe I'll find some files on that as well. Uh, I saw something about block, uh, block-free block aircraft. Block-free um, block free Super Hornets would be neat, but unfortunately, I think they cut the funding for... Yeah, I mean, Super Hornets are still going to fly with the Americans for some time, but production is going to be problematic. Um uh, 
does Finland choosing F-45 have any effect on Germany's decision? Well, if you look at the map, take a map of Europe now and just paint in like an empty map, just the countries, and then start coloring in which countries are now using F-45s. And you're going to start seeing that Germany is starting to get surrounded by those. And I think Lockheed, even though there's FCAS, of course, which is essentially sort of a competitor to F-45 in a in an overall sense, in, that, in, in, in the sense of if you buy the F-35, FCAS sort of loses some of its rationale behind it. You, you have to reset the program, perhaps. Um, it's essentially, essentially, it is a competitor to it in, in, in sort of a meta uh, approach. Um, also, if we think about sort of iterative improvement between the different aircraft models. Um, but yeah, I think Lockheed's sort of long-term strategy and trying to get like standardized Europe and NATO on the F-35 might pay dividends, might pay dividends. Um, ah, Bernhard is in the chat. Yes, look at this. German interior design from the 1970s. Fantastic, fantastic, isn't it? By the way, this is how, how our places still look to this very day. No, joking. Um, yeah, Eurofighter's obvious inevitable decision, kind of, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's a good aircraft. It's it's just not necessarily, not all the components are there in Eurofighter that we would need, but, yeah. Um... F-35 for political reasons. It's just a good aircraft. I mean, you can go for F-35. I think theoretically speak. Nah, it's not really possible. I mean, you can go for the F-35, but yeah, I mean, you still have a lot of Eurofighters. That's that's the thing is like Germany had this problem of having too many options and at the same time having no options. So it's a very, that's why I'm not being like, sometimes I see comments about, you know, how the German defense ministry and foreign ministry has handled the situation. I'm just like, it's a tough situation. It's really a tough situation. Um, get super Tomcats. <laughs> um, scrolling down. Christopher Wilson, welcome to Enthusiast. Thank you very much for, for becoming a channel member, Christopher. Thank you very much indeed. By the way, with that uh, channel membership, you also have now access to our Patreon Discord server, our channel membership Discord server. You can join that automatically with the YouTube integration on Discord. If you use Discord, uh, check it out. Uh, look forward to seeing you there. Uh, I'm just gonna pop on the Discord, yeah. There we go. If you pop on there uh, in the next couple of hours or something, something I will still be there. Um, and we have a fantastic community on the Discord server as well. It's really sort of starting to bloom up and there's plenty of discussion about World War II aircraft, Cold War aircraft, post-Cold War aircraft and everything in between. So. Um, do check it out. Thank you very much, Christopher. Thank you very much indeed. Very appreciated. Aircraft have four dimension length, wingspan, height, and politics. Oh man, I need to remember that one, Roberto. That's a good one. Um, that's a good one. Um, I'm actually going to write that down. That's a really cool one, Roberto. Um, planes, four dimensions. Length, height, span, and politics. I should put that on a t-shirt. <laughs> I should put that on a t-shirt. Um, West Germany was offered a Tomcat. Yeah, I, Iran was offered a Tomcat as well. Mm. Would I choose the P-40 Warhawk or the British Hurricane P-40? Absolutely, P40. Oh, thank you very much, uh, Karma in effect. Uh, what was the most impactful fighter aircraft in history? If you can't decide, uh, then just talk about your favorite one. Well, I'm just going to go with the Fokker Eindecker. It's the first aircraft that was really used in a dedicated fighter role. And it changed the air war within a week, within a day. Well, within a day is an exaggeration, but within a week at the Battle of Orla. Absolutely, Fokker Eindecker. It, it wasn't competitive. For a long time, it was like a short-term shock effect, but it changed everything. Fokker Eindecker. No discussion. Um, of course, by the way, 
you all know this. Um, there were other planes before that that had experimented with with uh, machine guns, yeah, like Roland Garros in, in, in France, right, with his Moren Soyer. Um, but the Fokker Eindegger was the first one to really do it properly with a synchronizer and so on and so forth. And also the first aircraft that was used really in a fighter role. So there we go. Uh, Drachen Niffel should do a collab video on the I-400 class submarine. Oh, well, yeah, that would be cool. That would be cool. Um, uh, am I the only one who has no sound? Uh, I hope that's just you. Refresh, unmute. Um, German tornadoes don't train at White Sands anymore. What's the new location for desert training? Um, are we still sending them? I, I saw some footage recently, but I'm not sure if that's pre-COVID. I'd have to check. Uh, you buy the four dimension t-shirts without a doubt. <laughs> it is a really cool. That's a really cool. Uh... Oh, is that a Sydney Cam quote? The four dimension one? Is it? There shouldn't be any copyrights on that, should there? Um... You love the tornado. I'm not the biggest fan of Eurofighter. Yeah, tornadoes days are numbered. Well, they used to already be numbered, but uh, uh, I no, I haven't really looked into into Poseidon too much, uh, to be honest. Um, I don't know that Troco. I wouldn't know. All right, so headphones. Okay. Germany should get Gripen. Uh, I don't think Germany's going to get Gripen. If we have Eurofighter, why would we get Gripen? Gripen would be a downgrade in... Oh, I shouldn't be saying this. Um, but compared to you, Eurofighter, Gripen is a downgrade, I, in my opinion. I know there's a lot of Gripen fans out there, and I love the Gripen as well. It's it's a, it's a fantastic looker, and I really like sort of the concept behind it. Uh, it's really a lot of a... It's kind of a lightweight fighter, but it's punching above its weight. But Eurofighter is just... I'm going to be German here and say Eurofighter is much better, yeah? Yeah, it is. It is. What is my opinion on the MiG-29? Well, it was a fantastic aircraft when it came out. Fantastic aircraft when it came out. Um, two. I have made two videos about that one, actually. Inside the cockpit. Check it out if you haven't seen it yet. Uh, uh, Luftwaffe uh, MiG-29 from the MHM Berlin Ghetto, the Luftwaffe Museum in Berlin Ghetto. And then I also made a video about sort of how they were folded into the West German, then full German uh, Luftwaffe after unification. Video about the Hellenic Air Force history and pilots. You know what? I actually was for thinking about this um, the other day uh, about Greek uh, F-4 Phantoms. So maybe, maybe. Uh, Phanos, by the way, would there be a museum you could recommend me in, in Greece? Because actually that's, I wouldn't know where to go in Greece. Uh, please do let me know. Please do let me know. Um, just going through the... Uh... Sound is good. Okay, everybody's saying sound is good. Fantastic. Uh, ah, the chat is moving. Y'all are so quickly. What is my opinion on the F-86 Sabre? Um, good jet. Yeah, fantastic jet. Took some time to getting there. Uh, but definitely with the MiG-15, um, sort of the first time, well, you can make an argument for the ME-262, but uh, that's when you start to see, okay, jets really, like, the USSR with the MiG-15 and the uh, the Americans and NATO with the, the Sabre and then later on the Canada Sabre, um, they finally sort of nailed the jet and then they obviously developed it from there. Um no, I like it. I like the, the Sabre. It's a good looker. Uh, fantastic aircraft for the time. What more could you want? Uh, episode on Luftwaffe 1946 designs. Nah, not really. Um, I'm not into the sort of the, the Luftwaffe, Wunderwaffle stuff, uh, mainly because there's so much stuff we still don't know about a lot of other elements of the Luftwaffe. Like there's so many gaps we still keep finding 
um, that I really don't see a sense in putting any sort of time and effort into trying to find information and research information about aircraft that never left the drawing board. You know, I know a lot of people like that sort of stuff and you do you, but for me, that's not interesting. I want to know, you know, I want to understand the Luftwaffe. I want to know, understand the stuff that was really happening um, and that was used in operational capacities at a reasonable level in number level and also sort of impact it had on the front lines and sort of the the, the wonder waffle luft waffle stuff is just not not the uh um the stuff that i'm sort of interested in but you know if it, at some point it fits into a video why not you and bernard need to befriend a german naval enthusiast for the trifecta <laughs> um Actually, I don't know that person. I mean, I was immediately thinking of um, of Drach Nefro. I mean, he does he does that stuff really well as well. Um, Many matter obscure aircraft. Yeah, I mean, you can you know ten minutes about any aircraft. Can be, right? The thing is, like, I, I thought about doing videos where I just take one plane and I briefly talk about the history of that aircraft for about ten minutes. And then I realized that's not the content I want to make. You know, I want to deep dive. I want to go, go behind the scenes. I want to go into the archives. I want to research. Um, and sort of this 10-minute stuff that you could read up. Not my stuff. But it's cool that somebody else is doing it. Gripen versus Eurofighter. Go for Rafale. <laughs> no. No. Rafale is really good for the French. I don't think it would be that good for the Germans. <laughs> to be honest, there's nothing to really release now on the MiG-29 that is not already out there. <laughs> Germany should get the MiG-45. <laughs> Don't think that's going to happen. Um, okay, I'm going to scroll now. Sorry, I'm, I'm missing a lot of questions here, but I have to catch up with you all. So I'm scrolling down completely to the bottom of the chat now. There is a war museum in Thessaloniki. Okay, cool, cool. We'll remember that one. Uh, Heinkel 177. I have files on the Heinkel 177, and it is very likely that in 2022 I'm going to make a video on that one. It is sort of in my preliminary planning list, but uh, things change sometimes. But yeah, definitely. I think I think that would be an aircraft that that would I would reasonably enjoy researching it because it is you know, a fascinating history. And I think at the same time, from what I've seen in the files, I think there will be a couple of things in there that will make people go, oh, okay, now that makes sense. So yeah, 300 people here, by the way. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you very much indeed for being here and sharing your Saturday evening, morning, afternoon, nighttime with me and everybody else in the chat. I hope you're having a fantastic time. Make some noise in the chat. Well, you're already chatting. I just realized how stupid that sounds. Um, but uh, you know what? Give give this. I'm gonna I'm gonna do the YouTuber thing now. I'm gonna tell you to like this like this stream. I'm just gonna see that number rising to get myself a little bit of an ego boost. I'm joking. Do what you want. Do what you want. Just happy that you're here, hanging out. Good vibes. Good vibes indeed. Um, and sorry, YouTube just had a pop up. That's weird. Okay, that works now. Um, oh, okay. I had a pop up on YouTube. I looked back to the like counter and it, and it went up by like 50 hits. Thank you very much for once again blowing me away. Could I make a video about a development of flying controls from cables to torque motors? Yeah, I think so. Um, there is still one video I want to do before that that is very sort of technically based, and that is on gun sites. That's something that a Patreon uh, supporter requested a long time ago. And sadly, because of COVID, it had, had to be pushed back and back and back because my initial vision for that video wasn't going to work anymore. Um, but I'm going to get it done in 2022. But I am going to write it down, um, your suggestion. Um, because that's really cool. I have a lot of uh, footage on on sort of the first control surfaces where you actually had a wing warping, like where we, ch we changed the shape of the wing in order to fly over to the modern stuff. 
um, you know, starting with uh, hydraulics, well, ca cables, then hydraulics and um, uh, torque motors, and then also over to fly-by-wire. Um, donation coming in here from, from oh, why, why the chat obey me? Uh, Kieran, what's your favorite civilian to military uh, conversion aircraft? You know what? I'm really partial to sort of the um, the maritime surveillance aircraft. A lot of those have history or that were converted out of airliners. Only recently, uh, today, I had an interaction with somebody, I believe, on Twitter or the YouTube comment section, uh, where he pointed out that, uh, you know, the, the, the Fokker Wolf 200, that you saw recently in a video that I made, um, it had a civilian origin. If that's the case with other maritime aircraft that are used in the military role nowadays, um, and I think he brought in the was it the P three? Let me check this. Um, I think it was. I think it was the P three. And then I said, um, you know, definitely because uh, the P three, I believe that that's the the one that's based on the L one hundred thirty three Lockheed, right? Um, no, not the, um, ah, uh, no, I didn't find it anymore. Looking for this comment. The P3 Orion, was it, right? No, 188. That was what it was. Yeah. Uh, 133 is Lockheed 133. Does that exist? I think that's like an experimental something, experimental jet. Yeah, somebody, somebody will tell me. Uh, blue skies. Ah, no, 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 no. Oh, to be honest, that A10 video that sent waves, shock waves in some directions. It's it's quite funny to see sort of the reaction on my A10 video on that one. Uh, some people got really really angry, but I got a lot of good feedback from very. Uh, unforeseen angles uh, so that was really really nice but i mean there's there's no reason for the depleted uranium ammo anymore there's no reason for for that stuff there's no reason for combat max anymore i mean that aircraft is just useful in a coin operation environment right now uh, and if you want to do tank busting you you take out your mavericks right just your agms <whistles> that's it you don't go into a gun strafe anymore so yeah um hei all the way on that one um, yes, Lockheed Electra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fantastic. You guys immediately knew what, what, what I was talking about. This is why I like you all. Seriously. Like when I struggle to remember exactly which one it is, there will be someone of you that knows it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for paying attention and for contributing. Um, our expert plan uh, interview still planned for 2022. Yes, yes. Um, I want to do make them a regular thing without them being too regular because I, you know, I want to get the right people and it's a personal scheduling thing as well. It's not always everybody is interested, not always everybody has time. Um, there's a couple of people that I have sort of in mind and I just need to send them an email, obviously not doing that during Christmas time. Um, but hopefully we can get something done for, for, uh, 2022 there as well. Razgrits, thank you very much. Long time watcher there, actually. I remember that name. Um, are there aircraft that went past the prototype stage or had limited production ones like the Heinkel 100 or the Focke Wolf 187 you like or wanted to see more from? Um, on the first, first thought, no. I mean, the Fokker Wolf 187. I mean, I would I would say that yeah, yes, of course it had a limited production one, but it had a proper production one, right? Heinkel 100 was slightly different, um, simply because Heinkel was like, I'm gonna produce this one. Um, specifically, World War Two.
some of the stuff that um, Japan was bringing out at the end. So, for example, you had, in Japan, you had the Judy dive bomber, right? Uh, and they built, like, what, close to 2,000 of those? And then they had the other one that came out, uh, B7A, which was both a dive bomber and a torpedo bomber, um, which is kind of neat. So maybe seeing more of that, I think it had a very limited production run. I want to say around 100 aircraft, not more than 150 or 200 uh, B7A. I think it was the B7A. Um, so stuff like that, which which sort of comes out and you, you, you're sort of seeing something cool uh, come from it, but then it just you know didn't push on. Um, and I, I would also say, I mean, a limited production run, some of the uh, Italian fighters, World War II, especially the later Vigianis and uh, the Fiat's and so on and so forth, they all had a limited production run, but they were pretty good as, as fighters. Um, overly complex for, for mass production, but yeah, as, as aircraft, they were performers. Um, thoughts on 187 music? I don't know what you mean by that, sorry. Um, I have a better fight. <laughs> Look at my face and stare at the ceiling lamp. Yeah, sorry, German German interior architecture. That's how it's going to be. Can I put this maybe like this? Is that better? Uh, Um, the next stream is probably going to happen when I'm back home, by the way. So you're not going to see this nice retro look. Um, yeah, I play some simulations, sometimes DCS, sometimes IL-2 when I have the time for it. Uh, <laughs> it's Saint. <laughs> it does give me a little bit of a halo sheen. Don't take that the wrong way, though. Um... Oh, hey, Priceless History. How are you doing? How are you doing? Um, why didn't you make a video about claims? Overclaiming, underclaiming, correct claiming? Uh, because all I can say about claiming is essentially summed up in a, in a sentence. I mean, I can just say, uh, you know, all sides overclaimed. It's normal. Don't get upset about it. Um, I could bring in specific examples of where it happened. And then, you know, I have all those examples and I've, I've sort of talked about that before on the channel. Maybe I should make a dedicated video about, you know what, I'm just going to write it down as an idea. Um, we'll see if I do it. I might bring that sort of specific examples from essentially every major air force out there um, and show that, yeah, overclaiming is absolutely normal. It's just, it's, it's, it happens. There's no reason to get uh, get annoyed by it. Um, so um, a video of thoughts on aerial torpedo bombing by reconnaissance aircraft. Uh, I want to do something on tor for torpedo bombing anyway. I think I'm going to start doing something on German torpedo bombing during World War II because they start out with a aerial torpedo that does not work and they have to get Italian ones. And then later on, they actually make quite some advancements. Except that, of course, torpedo bombing during World War II ends up being a dead end very, very quickly, and that it's absolutely nonsense and doesn't really work properly. So, yeah, there's going to be something on that. When? I don't know. Uh, no, keep the lamp. You guys want to keep the lamp? What's going on? <laughs> Any thoughts on the Finnish uh, Hayek's results? Well, shame shame for uh, Saab. I think Saab had a, had a good run there. Um, but yeah, um, they didn't get it in the end. It's in the. To be honest, it's not that surprising. I think the, I think the Finnish armed forces had been sort of already hinting to the fact that what they wanted was essentially only being covered by F thirty five. But yeah, I think Sa put a lot of sort of emphasis and sort of thought and and. Uh, and manpower and effort into their marketing campaign for uh, Finland, and it just didn't work out in the end. Um, there's a cool blog, by the way, on sort of Finnish uh, Finnish military matters uh, by Corporal Frisk, I think he's called Corporal Frisk. Um, what's the blog blog called again? I, I I do read it occasionally when he does something about um, aviation matters. And let me see if I can 
Oh yeah, it's just called Corporal Frisk. And that's a pretty cool blog, to be honest, if you're interested in sort of Finnish military matters. And uh, I think it's written by a NCO in the Finnish Navy. Um, but don't let that stop it. Absolutely not. Uh... <laughs> Dragon Niffle torpedo bombers make me sad. Well, if torpedo bombers make you sad, and dive bombers are going to make you cry. <laughs> How are you doing, Drach? How are you doing? Um, uh, let's see. Um, trying to catch up with chat again. Um, even the fairy, yeah, Drach. Even the fairy swordfish makes uh, makes you sad. Is that is that the case? Any plans to do the Belgrade Museum to look at Yugoslavian aviation? Um, yeah, I mean, that's the other thing. I, I do want to go sort of um, to a couple of these places in Eastern Europe. I'm just going to bundle that Eastern Europe. Sorry, that's just centralized Western European thinking. But no, I want to go to Poland. I want to go to um, Czech, the Czech Republic, Slovakia, um, Romania, Bulgaria, um, Yugoslavia. Well, the old Yugoslavia that doesn't exist anymore, Belgrade. Um, because there's a, a really a couple of cool collections there. Uh, it's trying to find the time, and right now it's it's just difficult. But no, definitely, um, definitely. Um, let's see. Trying to figure out chat again. Annoying. Um, would the torpedo bombing work well if the torpedo had passive acoustic homing? Um, well, the Germans were working on that uh, for aerial torpedoes, and they were also working on torpedoes that were uh, going into a search pattern, right? And they actually did get it to work. I have some archive files on that. Uh, and that I'm not quite sure if I have statistics on whether it worked better, um, because obviously in order to get the torpedo to do that, you actually have to drop the torpedo and that's a whole other matter. And then you have to, and in order to drop the torpedo, you have to get to the point where you can drop the torpedo. And that, especially sort of starting in 1942, 1943, is a very, very difficult proposition indeed. Oh my god, chat is blowing me again away again. Um Top Gun or versus Hot Shots. I've only seen Hot Shots once and I've seen Top Gun a lot of time. Top Gun is a documentary that everybody has to watch. Um, but that in public everybody hates. <laughs> Didn't I make a short about that? I forget it. Um Top Gun is a uh, is uh it's fun. Iceman, yes, you did. I saw that. Uh, I didn't reply yet. I saw your message. I will reply. Um, I, I was aware of his blog, and thank you very much for pointing it out as well. Uh, it's always nice to see uh, people pointing out good stuff. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> having trouble joining the Mongolian Navy. Can you give me a reference track? <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Um Okay. Um, did Luftwaffe have a torpedo bomber interceptor besides the passenger motor fired Condor? Uh, well, the Condor, even though the F version was supposed to sort of go into a torpedo bomber, it never did. Um, yeah, the, the Heinkels had uh, had torpedoes. The JU-88s were trialed with torpedoes. Um, the JU-87s were trialed with torpedoes. That They even had bombing trials over in Grosseto, Italy. Uh, never went far. The Dornier 217 had torpedo trials. So, yeah, um, it works. Yeah, well, it works. Whatever, whatever I'm saying. It, it was, there were options, let's say. Um, my contacts in the mighty Bolivian Navy should be able to get good work with them on gold. Oh, drag. Oh, drag. Um, what about torpedoes equipped with uh, glide down? Oh, you mean um, sort of? Um, you mean the the bombing torpedoes that the Germans had? Is that what you mean? Or the ones that you drop from higher altitude and then sort of glide down and then do that work? Because that I think they might have been working on that in World War Two, but I don't think it worked. Um, do I plan on visiting Moscow? Of course. Who doesn't want to visit Moscow once in their life? Absolutely. Um, why not? 
Um, Graf Zeppelin CV would have just been a bomb magnet. Build one real one. Build five dummies. <laughs> Set a giant hand trap for the area. Complete air army of <laughs> like flies to honey. Oh Samuel. Oh Samuel. You just won the war right there. It's a foolproof tactic. <laughs> um, where am I now? Uh, what am I doing in, uh, for Christmas? Well, uh, I'm in Germany right now. I'm not in the UK. Hence this art deco 1970s retro style uh, room. Um, and I am going to be spending my time with, uh, with family. Thanks for asking. Um, yeah, I'm going to be spending time with family. Uh, just calm down a little bit from from a fantastic year. Well, fantastic year in terms of you know doing this with all of you and uh, researching a lot and, uh, and getting the sort of the content out and doing what I essentially think is absolutely dream an absolute dream that this works out in the way it does. Um, in other ways, obviously, it's been a very difficult year for all of us. So. Good times, good times to spend with family now and just uh, relax and see the 2021 pass away and uh, start afresh into 2022. Wish all of you a good, good Christmas as well, or your regional equivalent, as well as a happy new year, or your regional equivalent, should it be at a different time. Um, as we say in Germany, guten Rutsch, which means a good slide into the new year. Don't ask me why we say that, we just do. Um, you live in the UK? Yes, uh, most of the time I live in the UK. Um, why is that strange? Um, well, I can think of multiple factors of why that is strange, yeah. Um, ignore my question. Um, uh, that, it's crazy the way that the chat moves on YouTube. Why does this not work properly? Well, it probably works as intended, right? Um, did I ever try radio control flying? Landing a scale plastic model can be very satisfying. No, mainly because I haven't found anybody dumb enough to let me at the controls of one. <laughs> that That's pretty much the reason why. Um, by the way, can I just say that when I started the stream, I was like, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try out this new concept. And this concept is going to be that I have been at the German military archives for about a week. And I have on my second screen here, about five files that I was going to talk and discuss with all of you, right? I was like, oh, these are cool files to talk about with you. And then maybe in 2022, I'll make a video about them. And we have spent an hour and 17 minutes chatting just between all of us. And I still have to do this. So I think we're going to shelve that for next time. Um, but by the way, is that something you're interested in? Like, do you, are you interested in, say, me doing a stream where I go through some of these files, research them themselves. I haven't read them fully, I've, I've skimmed through them, and just reading them together, going through them, and sort of absorbing the information directly from the from the um, from the original documents as we go through them. Is that something you would be interested in as a stream concept? Let me know. Um, actually, I'm an. We have polls. Remember that T-shirt poll I did earlier. Um, Let's do another poll. I'm excited. I can do this. Um, do you want to have archived uh, primary? I, I can already see chat exploding saying yes, but let's do this properly as we Germans do it. Yeah. Do you want to have archived primary source uh, research stream? Like I said, we go through them through one or two documents together. I show them on screen if I can, based on the copyrights of in each individual archives. And There we go. Ask my community. There we go. The button is literally called ask your community when I post this. Um, there we go. There's that poll. Um, just let me know what you think. Uh, brainstorming. Try a call-in show. <laughs> a call-in show. Somebody with as, as incompetent as me when it comes to social interaction should not have a call-in show. Okay. I am about... Close to, if, if there's a scale of reference from 1 to 10, and 1 is incompetent when it comes to social interaction, and 10, I'm a solid 2.5. Um, oh, yes. Okay, 93%. By the way, you don't have to say yes. You can say, yo, if, you, if you're not interested in that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, what answer did I expect? That's the uh, 
story of my life, <laughs> to be honest, Martin. Uh, that's the story of my life. Um, are most in chat scale models? I think we have a lot of scale models here, yes. Um, yes, you are watching me. Um, yeah, I've, I've, that's the thing, Robert, right? You just have to try it out. Even if you all would have said no now, I think I would have tried it out once or twice just to see if that is that something that works. Um, yeah. No, it's it's really cool to see this 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 result. Ninety two percent of you are saying no. Eight percent are uh, sorry. Ninety two of you are saying percent are saying yes, and eight percent are saying no. Um, I didn't expect that. I I thought it was going to be sixty, sixty forty, sixty forty. Um, but that's really cool. Um, <laughs> your competence blows mine away, Timothy. We should have lunch. It's going to be the most awkward lunch ever. <laughs> no, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. I'm sure it will be fantastic to chat with you. Um, <laughs> me as a solid 2.5 and you what? Well, if, if you say that blows you away, what are you then? A 2? A 1.5? That's going to be a good chat. We're going to have a good chat. Um. Okay, so YouTube has just like punched five people in the face for some message that they have posted. I don't understand why. I have allowed two of them now because two of them seem okay, but the other three are spam, I think. YouTube literally just went nope, 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 nope to five of you. <laughs> I think I think of a couple of those were spam accounts, but I, I identified the correct ones, I think, yeah. Okay, so we're going to end the poll in 20 seconds. So get your answers in to the poll. Make sure you hit yes or no after reading the question. Um, 270 people still here. Oh, well, 266. Hits me right in the heart, man. We just lost another six people. Um, 323 likes. Don't know what that means, but I guess it means you guys are enjoying your time and I'm enjoying mine as well. Cheers. And... Uh, Should I remind all of you to hit the... No, I shouldn't remind all of you to hit the like button. A bunch of you have just hit the like button. It just went... Pew. Fantastic. Okay, um, end the poll. End the poll. What is the uh, result? 146 votes. That's a good turnout with the amount of viewers we have. Uh, fantastic. Okay, we'll do that. The belly button attack. By the way, wow. The last video on the uh, Japanese fighter tactics, right? Thank you very much to all of you, seriously, to all of you that pointed out that Dr. Pepper, the tactic that was named Dr. Pepper, actually makes sense. Because I literally, as, you know, this is sort of the, 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 the barriers that sometimes we as people that engage with history and research history, I'm, I'm, okay, I'm gonna call myself a historian just for this point, okay, um, that we have because Sometimes there are certain cultural nuances that we don't know. We just don't know. And it doesn't make any sense, right? So a lot of those names for the tactics, the seven tactics, and I, I, I introduced like three of them, they made sense except the Dr. Pepper one. And then a lot of you explained, well, it makes sense because they're coming from the o'clock um, uh, directions that Dr. Pepper had in her advert, right? By the way, Dr. Pepper is not a sponsor. I just want to make that clear. But hey, if you want to get in touch... No? Um, and I found that really interesting I found that really really cool so thank you very much for that feedback and thank you very much for that information really it's really really cool um, seeing all of you sort of immediately picking up on that because yeah that's that's like a cultural thing right if, you, if you're from the US especially from Tejas um, where Dr. Pepper seems to be like the sort of the state beverage that's what I'm being told by Tejasians um Obviously, it makes perfect sense. For me, it doesn't, right? So thank you very much. Uh, yeah, thank you very much indeed. Um, it's like uh, I had an American friend who once told me, like, oh, yeah, in, in Germany, it's like all in Lederhosen, right? And I was like, no, 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 no. Germany, Lederhosen is just just in Bavaria, in the south, maybe Austria. Um, it's you know, these cultural nuances that we sometimes don't understand. So that's really, really cool. Um I'm also going to post the video once again, because like I said, that video, some reason the algorithm hasn't picked it up. So if you want to see what I was talking about with Dr. Pepper right now, there you go. 
Yeah, that's the link. And thank you very much, Joe. Priceless history. Also, by the way, priceless history there. Um, who's just put in a donation in the chat. First of all, he's also a Patreon, and uh, we speak regularly on our Patreon Discord channel uh, get-togethers. There's one get-together, by the way, if you're a Patreon or channel member, uh, join Discord and haven't done it yet, but there's a get-together tomorrow, the last one for 2022. We're going to start afresh in 20, uh, 2021. We're going to start afresh in 2022 as well. Um, we're going to have a, a meetup uh, tomorrow. Um, how do you plan your archive dives? What is your focus? What is your find? Um, make a video about how you go to archives, have to brush paper dust from hair after the day. <laughs> Some of the files are really nasty, to be honest. Um, either by the content or by their the state they're in. Um, <laughs> some of you are going to take that the wrong way. Um, no, there is a certain focus. Um, so there's a content focus, there's an interest focus, and then there is a focus on what is achievable in the time that I have, right? So there's, there's multiple vectors. Um, but I do have this idea, this vision of making a video about archives themselves. And I'm going to reach out to one archive and specifically and see if I can do that in 2022. And obviously, as a patron, you'll be the first to know. So, um, yes, absolutely. And thank you very much for that donation again, uh, Joe. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Uh, see you tomorrow. Speak to you tomorrow. For real. Like, you know, boys. Um, I think you can call yourself a historian after having just spent a week researching stuff in an archive. Yeah, Sable San Movie, if you say it like that, it's kind of obvious. But this is going back to the uh to the whole good old point of I don't know how to sell myself. <laughs> uh Fokker Man, Dr. Pepper is barbecue water. I should try to marinate my meat in the Dr. Pepper. Maybe that has uh uh that works. Um my daughter has come back from three months in France and there's no root beer. They think it tastes like, yeah, um, Ace Fox, I don't understand root beer either. I tried it once and then I tried it again just to make sure that the first time wasn't bad. But it tastes like, yeah, like like cheap children's medicine, a cough syrup. A cough syrup over in Europe, or at least the cough syrup I had, tastes like root beer. I did not enjoy it. Um, I don't understand the hype about it. But I think that's sort of the cultural socialization that you have with your taste, right? If, if that's the stuff you have when you're young, that's the stuff you're going to like. And tastes do sometimes change. Uh, like I didn't, I used to not like marzipan, so um, almond paste. Now I absolutely love it. So yeah, um, we, we don't have that. Um, have have 311,000 subscribers made you rich? But well, subscribers don't make you rich. Um, subscribers are just a number. Um, you know, if, if you want to be capitalist about it, views get the ad revenue, right? Um, rich? No, I wouldn't say rich. Um, right now, I think I'm doing well. You know, this 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 is paying the bills. Um, and I'm, I've, I can do sort of the projects that I want to do and I want to advance with the channel based on the income that I have of the channel. Um, so, yeah, average run-of-the-mill sort of income for 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 now. Um, so not not rich, no. That's, I mean, I just want to make videos about aircraft. I just want to know stuff about aircraft. Now yeah, that's, the, that's the goal. Um, and since it's paying the bill, I can spend more time on that because I don't have to pay or I don't have to do anything on the uh, on the job application from for now. Although that can change. Maybe YouTube tomorrow says, nope. And I'm gone. And then I'll get a job, just like everybody else. I have a job. This is a job, in a way. In a way. Uh, it's a thing, BBQ marinade. Really, Dr. Pepper is a thing? No, uh, Millennium, um, the channel is essentially my job. Um, I have a problem describing it as a job because I'm thinking, I'm like, I'm a YouTuber. Uh, is that a job? Um, but in, I'm, yeah, I'm paying my bills with it. So I guess it is my job. But I, at the same time, also a PhD student. So I'm juggling those two things, right? But P and PhD, uh, doing a PhD is essentially a second job as well. So, yeah. Um, do you think it's a good idea of the Dutch Air Force to use Santa Claus as air marshal? <laughs> I think that's an excellent idea. Drac, thank you very much for that donation. Have you ever thought of going to somewhere like Thunder City to fly a working military jet or similar real flight experience? Um, 
yes and no. Um, I mean, I definitely want to sort of fly in 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 jets or even World War II aircraft. There's a couple of places that do that, right? Even in the UK. Um, didn't we talk about that once? Um, and I definitely want to do it. Uh, it's just, like I said, right now, like it's job and it's my PhD juggling those things. But no, definitely. Um, but I would want to to also share that experience with people. So if it's just for me, um, yes, I would do it. If it, I think I can do it, me plus the channel and ha share that with all of you, um, that would be even better. That would be absolutely better. How do you deal with the weird look people give you when you mention the name Fockerwolf? Because they think you're talking about having a relation with a wolf. Only a me problem or what? Um, see, even though I'm a, I'm a solid 2.5 on a scale of 1 to 10 with 1 being socially incompetent and uh, 10 being extremely socially versed, um, I, do, I, I get those looks regularly anyway. So I don't think I notice. I'll try to pay attention. I'll try to pay attention. Um, uh, do you know what the Heinkel 111Z uh, is? Yeah, it's two Heinkels smashed together, right? Um, Coca Cola can dissolve a nail. Yeah, it can also remove rust. Um, I don't know, maybe. Um, you're doing a really good job of this channel. Thank you, Robert. Thank you very much. Um, yes, uh, like uh, Samuel says there, uh, Kintsuna, Z means twin, uh, twilling. <laughs> Z means twin. Z means zwilling of Deutsch in German, and that means twin. Uh, if we super chat you 10 euros, would you take off your jumper? This has taken... <laughs> A really strange turn there, uh, Samuel. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> Where does that question come from? <laughs> oh. Where does that question come from? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Actually, funnily enough, we talked about merch earlier, right? I have a t-shirt that I used to sell as merch. Do I still have it here? One second. Uh, no, of course, because I'm so good at planning this sort of stuff. It's it's probably uh, being washed right now. Um, <laughs> um Yeah, at Duxford you can fly on boards, but Duxford is difficult. Um, I've had some communication. It's it's uh, some some museums are more difficult simply because um, they're very big institutions, very bureaucratic, very sort of set in their ways. Um, always very professional and always very good sort of in having conversation, but sometimes it just takes and takes and takes a lot of time. But yeah, I mean, you're probably right about sort of the private, the private uh, possibilities of flying an aircraft there. Um, Ace Fox came into the chat to talk about the F-15 EX for Germany and who will win the Canada fighter contract? Well, the F-35 will. Um, and you end up talking about root beer. <laughs> um, if they say, ask you to take off your pants, then it's time to end the stream. Yeah, then then it is time to end the stream. Um, <laughs> do you count airships as uh, aircraft? Um, I guess, yeah. Why not? They fly, right? Um, Jacob, thank you very much. How can different countries have different needs in aircraft? What can a Eurofighter do that a F-35 can't do and vice versa? Um, well, different countries have obviously different needs for aircraft depending on where they are situated and what their strategy is, right? A continental Luftwaffe or a continental air force like the German uh, Luftwaffe uh, is going to have a different need than the RAF that is sitting on an island, right? Or um, 
yeah, considering the, obviously you have the the Royal Air Force in the UK, and then you also have um, the Royal Navy that need the aircraft because of that naval aspect that you have in Britain. Um, France is a little bit similar, right? They 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 are sort of a continental power with a maritime outlook in a way, um, sitting comfortably behind Germany right now. Um, so different countries have different needs, and that's why also why they the French go with their own aircraft. The, the Swedes go with their own aircraft, right? Because they know that that's specifically designed for their own needs, and they can also um, can also uh, support their own industry. Um, Eurofighter, I mean, it's it's hard comparing the Eurofighter with the F-35 because it's there's such a big divide, but Eurofighter is a fantastic interceptor in a way. You know, it goes up fast, it can shoot a lot of rockets very quickly, and it gets the hell out of Dodge, and you wins and repeat. It's it's pretty good at that. Uh, I bet you money the Canadians won't pick the F-35. Well, what's the other option? A SAP Gripen that doesn't even have the minimum requirement from the range that the Canadians set up themselves? Like, what's the alternative? You have the SAP Gripen in the run, and you have the F-35 in the run. The F-35 checks all the boxes that the Canadians have set out themselves. And the SAP Gripen doesn't do any of the minimum requirements, especially when it comes to range. It, it doesn't. It doesn't have the minimum requirement. Um, and the whole thing about having a production base in Canada in order to build the grip, and just like they've done it with Brazil, is in the long run, is actually more expensive. Like they've done the calculations. It's more expensive. You don't think about that because you think like grip is like, oh, this cheap, this cheap, uh, cheap solution right uh well, what's the official figures five thousand um usd for a flight hour nah 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 yeah um i, I had a chat with somebody recently who, who's shall we say well worst when it comes to uh canadian procurement and so on and he, he the person laid it out for me and i was like yeah okay f-35 f-35 it is there is no other option um BTS Koblenz have some planes and equipment. Yes, I know of Koblenz. Um, their technische Sammlung uh, haven't been yet. Wanna go? Looks cool. Um, why do the Swiss use FA-18s? Have they got a secret aircraft carrier in Lake Geneva? Uh, I mean, the Finns have FA-18s, although they are uh, the um, the old ones. Um, but yeah, they're transitioning to F-35s now as well. Because to be honest, with with um, with Switzerland, I don't understand the choice for the F-35. I just don't understand it. They don't need the F-35. Eurofighter works, Gripen works, Rafale works. Why the F-35? It's such a strange, strange choice. Um, I just don't understand. Um, uh, I should marinate. <laughs> Uh, um, will a X a HX uh, affect the Canadian selection? I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, because essentially this Canadian selection is done. It's a contest without a contest right, right now. They're just trying to break it down to say like, okay, so we do have to buy the F-35, even though we said we do. Well, Trudeau said you wouldn't, but you know. He, uh, I'm not well versed in Canadian politics, so please excuse me if I do I may make mistakes. But I think he, the statement by Trudeau was essentially a domestic politics statement, and those don't work well with with actual procurement plans. Yeah, Nico. Yeah, probably. Um, but still, I. I Acquire, I can see that. F-35, long run, cheaper, probably as well. Um, although I would make an argument that's not necessarily true. But no, I mean, the, the way that the F-35 production has been ramping up, it is no longer sort of the expensive beast it used to be, right? Uh, because of the, the growing orders for it. Um, so yeah, I mean, the, the price point has dropped a lot. But it's, it's still such a strange decision, in my opinion. Um, I mean, with, with Switzerland, at least we can argue about it, right? With some other countries where where they took the F-35, it's just like, yeah, obviously they did. Um, 
Sorry if my questions have been dumb. Hey, Jacob, there are no dumb questions. There are no dumb questions. In fact, the dumb questions and the naive questions are usually the good ones. Um, I find this more and more, even with stuff that I'm researching myself. Sometimes I'm like, okay, so this happened. Then I'm like, wait a second, why did this happen? Seems like a stupid question, but why does? And then I look into it, it's like, oh, okay. That's opened a whole new perspective on things. Questions are not dumb. If you don't know something, ask. Ask. If somebody's judging you for it, whatever, it's their problem. Um, okay, so this has gone very F35, uh, F35 now in, in the chat. Um, which is better, interrupter or synchronizer? Well, it depends what you're trying to do with it. Um, interrupter is the sort of old reliable tech. Synchronizer works as well. Um, but synchronizer, do you mean as in, so this, for example, synchronizing wing guns or something like that? Because that exists as well. Like electric synchronization, that's what you're talking about, right? I mean, electric synchronization is generally better, but it's also more complex. Um, Plus, you need like electric priming, and, and that's a whole other can of worms. So, um, yeah, it, 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 the why, the how, and the when, and, and, and all these naive questions are the, usually the ones that where you learn the most. Um, Croatian purchase of a second hand with files, good or bad decision. Hey, for Croatia, if you can get those, that's fine. You got it. Sometimes you just, yeah, that's fine. Absolutely fine. Um, ah, chat, you're moving too fast for me. What is going on? What is going on? Um, I'm trying to scroll up. There's a lot of questions. Um, like I scroll up in the chat. This is how incompetent I am when it comes to uh, comes to technology. But I scroll up to the chat, and then it scrolls down automatically. Why YouTube? Why do you do this? Um, I'm sorry if I'm missing your questions right now. YouTube just doesn't allow me to scroll up. Um, reject the F forty five. Return to the sub of camel. Solid choice. Solid choice. It's working the weekend, yeah. Um, always, why not? Um, what was your favorite part of the walk around and look inside of the swordfish? Was there anything in particular that stood out to you, Jamie? Um, it was fun. It was I, honestly like the 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 inside the cockpit on the fairy swordfish, plus the other ones that are already in early access for Patreon and channel members that are also filmed at Navy Wings. Um, were some of the best inside the cockpits I've ever filmed because Navy Wings, the organization that cares for them, gave us fantastic access. They were really, really cool. And sort of some of the technicians were just running down the hangar trying to get stuff for us to film. They're like, oh, you can show this, you can show that, and you can show that. It was really, really cool. Um, shout out also for to Drac, who sort of organized all of that um, and took me along and, and made sure that uh, that we could do this. Um, that was that was really, really cool. Um, so first of all what's what's cool is sitting inside of those aircraft and just experiencing and breathing in the air and i think the i think the stuff that always throws me off is the size of the fairy swordfish because you think of this a oh, little bit a little bitty biplane right no 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 it's a torpedo bomber and the torpedo is larger than me so obviously the aircraft is going to be quite big right um but those things throw you off so once you stand in front of it you're like oh it's actually quite quite big um so that was that was that was cool it just it it just once again shows that you can read at the amount of books that you can read and read and read and read and archive files and whatever once you stand in front of it you're like oh okay okay and you get a completely new perspective on it um Yeah, Swordfish is is a big aircraft. Um, favorite country is in War Thunder is okay, UK. Uh, I, in in um, I do play War Thunder sometimes. I mean, I wouldn't make sponsored videos with War Thunder if I wouldn't actually know the product, right? So I do play it occasionally, sometimes with Bo, 
um, you know, when we can find it into our schedules. And uh, sometimes myself, if I just want to chill out for an hour in the evening, when I, when I just like, okay, I'm shot, uh, I, I need to have a break. Um, and I usually roll with Sweden or Italy. Um, yeah, those are sort of my two countries to, uh, to go to. Um, really enjoy those. Um, have I done a video on the mosquito? Not yet. In planning. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Very, very soon. Maybe. Um, do I skydive? No. No. I don't want to go out of this world just yet. So I still have I still have stuff to do. And once I, I once I'm complete and once I'm happy with my life, once I'm like, okay, I've peaked, then then I'll skydive. Chinese airplanes, are they any good? Uh, watch the uh, video that I did, uh, the interview with Justin Bronk from Ruzi. Uh, that's a really good video. I mean, some people got angry, but whatever. Um, that's a really good video. Some good, really good feedback as well. Um, definitely. Oh, France. Yes, of course, uh, Miss Modeler. Uh, I also play France sometimes in, 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 um, in War Thunder. France, Italy, and uh, Sweden. Um, that's the one uh, since I do it. Frank, I'm part time, so uh, I'm slowly approaching the end, I shall say. But being part time, it's a little bit more flexible. Um, but I'm really sort of hunkering down now, and I, I want to complete the thing, and I just want to get it done. Um, because first of all, it's taking a lot of time, and second of all, um, you know, I have what I need, and I just need to put it together and 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 work it out and work it out. Um, and I'm doing a lot of, of that um, over the last couple of weeks and months, I'm working a lot on it and it's and it's shaping up. I'm, I'm really sort of positive right now. <laughs> of course, PhD life is, you know, it's like this, um, but uh, it's shaping up. Um, ah, Millennium, go for it. You, you just did, why not? Um, Why those countries in war from there? Sweden, France, Italy, any reason? Well, they have typically light, fast, and heavy hitting uh, vehicles. Um, and I like the planes. I like the French planes. They're different. Um, I like the Italians, uh, the Italian planes, uh, again, because they're not sort of run of the mill. And Sweden, the same thing. I just like quirky stuff. That's just me. And if something is fast, and has a good amount of firepower, I like it. Um, if it's quirky, has some really distinct characteristics, if, if, if it has a character, then then I like it. And in you know the stuff that I don't know from 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 sort of gameplay visual perspective, I'm at home with those. Um, PhD comics, <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah, Greg. <laughs> yeah, always good for a laugh. <laughs> Uh, well, the PhD paper gets published, generally speaking, yes. So, theoretically, yes. PhD, am I pursuing King's College, London, and I'm doing something in sort of political science, um, influence of public opinion on European foreign policy. So, yeah, completely different. But it's fun. It's good. I like it. Where is aviation trend, in your opinion? Helicopters. <laughs> like, how do... How do they fly? Like the ground just rejects them, right? That's why they fly. And they just vibrate enough so the ground is like, oh no, I'm moving away from you. And then they go up. Um, it's helicopters, man. They just fly on voodoo. That's just how they do. Um, needs the goblin and you'll be happy. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Um, Ordered your Stucker book. When can I expect arrival? So um, uh, keep in sort of uh, up to date with uh, with the campaign. Uh, we haven't pushed out a no, uh, an update recently simply because we're like, you know, we don't want to harass people with updates either. Um, but uh, if you check on the perk that you've uh, that you've ordered on the perk itself, it says the delivery time, which is estimated uh, February and March. The only thing that I'm worrying about a little bit now is this new Omicron thing. Because last year we had to postpone it by one or two months um, because of uh, of COVID, and um, uh, last year was horrendous. I mean, 
very happy of how the campaign went last year uh, with the uh, Sturmzug, um, Sturmzug book, Sturmzug book. And very happy indeed with it. But we had uh, well, shipping was was a nightmare. We got it in the end. We got it out there. I think everybody was happy. Um, and you know we can cl clap ourselves on the back that Bernhard and I we we sent out you know quality product during pandemic times. Uh, I'm a little bit worried, however, with this Omicron thing that's around the corner, that maybe that has an impact on shipping. So thank you very much for ordering the Stuka book. We will get it to you absolutely. Uh, estimated delivery time February, March 2022. If not, it's going to be one or two months later. We will update you, absolutely. Um, what cheap, fast fighter or bomber would you have ordered and used in Afghan, Iraq or other non-contested airspace? Um, for what purpose? I mean, the planes that were used there were fine. You know, um, A-10 was fine from, from a coin perspective. Even a Super Tucano is fine from a coin perspective, depending on what you're facing. Um, <laughs> Russia should build a new Ikrano plane just because, just because, yeah. Get Elon Musk on there. But no, he's too, too busy blasting into the atmosphere, isn't he? Um, he was hard to learn. Oh, yeah, I, I, I definitely. Um, right. Okay. Um, um, F 35 is a helicopter. Changed my mind. Oof. Oof. Um, contentious there. Contentious there, buddy. Parrot, you're being contentious. You're just trying to get a reaction there. Yeah, and I'm not going to fall for it. Uh, yeah, the Vickers Wellensley is like sort of the go to, one of the go to. To be honest, there's weirder planes from the interwar period than the Victor Wellensley. I think that's just the most well known one. Um, anything by Vickers, to be honest, is just bonkers from the interwar period. It's such a cool period. Uh, I, I'm just sad that no plane really survived from that time um what started my interest in aviation bath you, buddy you have patrona you have to uh you essentially blame an old family friend of uh of us uh who, who had a civilian pilot's license for light aircraft and he put, uh, took me flying and that's how it went um yeah do you think the stuka could work in today's combat if a bit modernized well what do you mean with modernized um like a turboprop into it, just get a Super Tucano. Now the Stuka, would, like, let's assume Stuka plus a turboprop. First of all, that would be that would be difficult. Um, but let's assume you can work, make it work. Now nah, you already got better plans than that. Um, your thoughts on the Sky Raider? That's a cool aircraft. It's a cool aircraft. I mean, it's a little bit of a relic from World War II, right? They realized that in Vietnam that, yes, as a cast aircraft, it can do its job, but it's still like limited by by being essentially, you have to drop it in when you see the whites of their, of their eyes, right? And, and that sort of cast is outdated by the time of the Vietnam War. It still happens and it still had success, but theoretically speaking, it's out of date. Uh, plan to do a video on airplanes that were attached to World War II USA battleships. Um, maybe if I can go to the US, yeah. Exactly, we don't we need the inverted gold wings today. No, but I mean, if we would assume that we take to take the Stuka and we just run with the idea of modernizing it with a tour prop at avionics and so on and so forth, there's better, there's better. Um, I mean, just the fixed landing gear. Why um, at this point? Um, A7 Corsair, that's a good aircraft actually for CAS. Um, there obviously was that A7 versus A10 fly off that was in favor, stacked in favor of the A10, but they're so different aircraft that you can't really compare them, right? Uh, but the A A7 as a, as a, let's say it, close air support battle airfield air in air. air 
battle air battlefield air interdiction um aircraft was was good was good um what is your opinion why the chat you're moving so fast um why did you choose an air cobra as a thumbnail uh i just had it on my in my fold and i was like i'm gonna take that one um I could have used sort of my face and being like, ah, right. Could have used that. Didn't. Next time. Um, what if the Stuga had retractable landing gear during World War II? Well, it didn't. And it would have made it a lot more complex and probably wouldn't have held the same amount of weight. It probably wouldn't have been as rugged. And it would have been a lot of maintenance hell, especially on the Eastern Front. Um, yeah, I mean, it would have been more modern, I guess, but it would have come with a lot of... Um, downsides your video on the tbd devastator was amazing i wish the u.s navy would have tried to improve it where can i get the book titled battle um the flight operations instructions uh, i think i bought it on your uh friendly jeff bezos website uh, back then if not just google it um they might be out of print at the moment and uh otherwise with with these flight operation instructions sometimes you just find them online as well yeah, the original ones. That was a reprint, so obviously, you know, you can you can buy those sometimes. Um, what do you think of the F4N and the F4S? <laughs> uh, next questions. Next question. Um, Video on the Aero Cobra giving the Soviet experience on the US one. The thing is, there is an Aero Cobra that I want to film in Finland at Tikakoski, right? Tikakoski, are there any Finns in chat? Um, they will soon tell me, I'm sure. Mitakulu, Suomi, something like that. Um, I think it's in Tikakoski, right? Uh, where they have one, or is it, or is it somewhere else? Is it direction west of Helsinki? There's another one. There's a small museum somewhere. Uh, Nico, yes. Oh, you were here from the start. You're already here for two hours. Thank you very much. Tikakoski, okay. Still have to go there. It looks like a fantastic museum. What is the difference between the Adidas? Well, it's a different article depending on the gender of the noun. So... There, there's, there's your, there's your answer. Um, yeah, uh, the thing is, like for Finland, I think there's like a rule or regulation that any plane that has seen service in Finland has to have at least one surviving uh, aircraft in a museum. They did, they, they sort of passed that regulation too late to save all of them, but they saved a good number of them. And I think most countries sort of go with that approach now, which is really cool. Um, I'm just gonna check the time here. Oh, okay. I'm gonna have to start, stop soon here. Um, so yeah, actually guys, you know what? I'm just gonna call it, call it here now. We're approaching two hours. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you very much also, seriously, for a fantastic 2021. Uh, you know, thanks for being here. Thanks for watching the videos. Thanks for enjoying the content, I guess. Uh, all the supporters on Patreon, all the supporters on uh, my channel memberships. Thank you very much. Remember, Patreons and channel members, we have a, a Discord chat tomorrow coming up, that voice chat. So I uh, hope to see you all there as well. Make sure you check out the last video that I pointed out. I'm just going to put it in the chat now. For some reason, YouTube didn't really push it out properly. So make sure you watch that in the uh, next 20 minutes. It's only that long. And it's some fantastic information on Japanese fighter pilots and their tactics against uh, Allied bombers like the B-17, B-24, and so on and so forth. So seriously, guys, I appreciate it so much. 2021, thank you very much indeed. Uh, we'll start strong in 2022. I mean, I've just been to the archive and I already know I have videos with the files that we have here ready for all of you. Well, I've got to write them and script them first and then I'm going to make them and so on and so forth. You know what I mean. Uh, 2022 is going to be absolutely fantastic. I wish all of you a very Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays. All your regional equivalents. Same thing with uh, going into the new year. Have a nice slide in the new year, as we say in Germany. 
a happy new year indeed and hope to see you all on the other side take care surround yourself with good friends and family be safe and we shall see each other again very very soon thank you very much all of you and bye bye